Okay, this chapter we're going to cover glows, fogs, and flares, uh, the optical effects available to you in Maya. And these are effects that can easily become cliché, or rather have become cliché in CG, uh, but uh, play an important role with backgrounds and sets work. Uh, so they do provide kind of a good arsenal of, uh, of tools for you for backgrounds uh, used in moderation, of course. So some of these effects do have stability issues uh, within the package, um, but there are some, uh, some ways to rectify that. Um, also, most of these effects are traditionally done in the compositing step. And what I found useful is to render these as a separate pass in Maya and uh, do add them in composite uh, as opposed to in camera in Maya. Some of the effects are best rendered in the, uh, in the camera, though, for occlusion and matting purposes, but even that can be uh, set up properly in your composite. So let's look at uh, a few. Uh, the first of uh, the optical effects is that of light glow. And the important thing to know about these, uh, these light effects is that uh, some of them are retinal effects and some exist in world space. So in this case, uh, light glows exist only on the uh, retinal portion of your eye and nowhere in the real world. Um, this is typical, say, as a searchlight uh, pans across a foggy night. Uh, the use of fog would be a world space effect, and the, the flare or the glow that would occur as it sweeps across your eye would be considered a light glow. The downside to this particular effect is that it can run your RAM uh, very high, uh, depending how many sources you have, so it's a bit expensive uh, from a RAM side. Um, this is also rendered as a post-process as opposed to uh, in camera uh, throughout the render. But the main thing that I like light glows for is that they can simulate light wrapping. So we'll look at an example of this. Uh, the next uh, category of these effects is light fog. And this is the traditional fog emitted from a, uh, say, a sample spotlight. Uh, the thing about light fog is that it does exist in world space. Uh, so you will see it during the render uh, stage. It's very cheap to render um, as you move into volumetric fog with proper volumetric occlusion. It can be uh, a bit more expensive, but in general, it's, a, it's an easy effect to render. Um, it can be occluded uh, if shadow mapping is turned on, and this is uh, perhaps the most useful uh, aspect of it, um, or cliche, depending how you apply it. And lastly, it's uh, always useful to apply some UV noise to the breakup of this. This is a very cliched and giveaway appearance of CG to have a perfectly uh, foggy uh, spotlight. And the last category is that of flares, um, most commonly lens flare. And again, this definitely needs to be used in moderation. It's another uh, cliched effect. Um, but it's very useful in nodal pan moves. So uh, in a nodal pan, say a pan and tile setup, and uh, we'll cover this in an upcoming DVD, um, there's no parallax in the scene, but there is parallax of optical effects. So as the camera sweeps across, say, the sun, there would be a lens flare, even though the parallax in the scene stays constant. So uh, uh, it's still very useful for that. And uh, in, within the Maya renderer, there are cheap or expensive options available, and we'll look at those. And again, lens flare is probably, uh, well, is always best uh, composited as well uh, as a separate pass uh, to give the control. So here we have two lens flare options in Maya, one uh, cheaper to render and one more expensive. Uh, the more expensive one is based on a uh, post-process on top of the glow, top of the other optical effects. The cheap flare is just a form of a light glow. And uh, to be honest, I tend to prefer the cheap uh, flare effect because it's a little less uh, uh, cliched as the other one. But, uh, but if you want kind of a nice chromatic aberration within the flare, the expensive one is, uh, is worth looking at. So here's an example of uh, the multitude of optical effects all used together. So here we have a glow region uh, at the uh, upper left. And this provides, uh, the nice thing about glows, as they're stacked near each other, you'll get kind of a blooming effect uh, of them. So again, a good use for stadium-type lighting. Light fog is being emitted by these lights too, but in a very large radius, just in very uh, uh, reduced opacity. So just to provide an atmospheric haze surrounding these lights. 
this is just the uh, uh, the cliched fog spotlight, uh, very distant. Um, light glows are, again, a more resolute uh, kind of appearance. In this case, it'll have more of a starburst pattern. And uh, that's where light glows really come in. If you need a uh, more of a chromatic aberration or chromatic type of effect, um, a glow is uh, what you would use. Radial noise is a way to take fog and then provide uh, a starburst pattern on it, basically uh, pushing noise through the fog radially, which uh, when seen in camera appears to be a starburst pattern. So again, a very inexpensive way to do that. And then lastly, this is using incandescence map to uh, to provide the lighting information here. So the and that's probably the most important aspect of this image is that there is no lighting being contributed from these lights. This is purely a uh, painted scene, and uh, uh, again, all these lights, these optical effects, are just done as a uh, as a light effect itself, not to provide any source lighting. So all the uh, shadowing from this and, and so forth is all painted into the map. This example shows best, uh, I think, the what I like about uh, glows, and that's the light wrapping effect. So here there's uh, three spotlights. We can look at this in plan, uh, plan view. And here we have three spots uh, in front of this window grating uh, within each three. And they emit a light glow as well as a fog, and they have shadow mapping turned on. So I do get occlusion of the grating within the fog, and I can see that, and that's useful. Uh, but the thing I, I like best about this is the light glow. And again, because glow is ap applied as a post-process, um, it will be rendered over the final image. So it can give the appearance of having a light wrap. So in this case, I can see the light kind of washing across uh, this juncture, creating a softer, kind of more uh, uh, blown appearance of lighting. And that I've found very useful for environments. Um, here's radial noise applied. This is just a texture map and radial noise applied to, to give the appearance of the grating without something as heavy handed as that type of occlusion and uh, a little bit of shader glow on that light. So uh, these effects can reinforce any digital set uh, and uh, will be useful. Um, but again, whether you apply these in camera and composite uh, will be up to you. Okay, now let's very briefly look at the uh, uh, controls for one of these optical effects. What I've done here is just rendered in IPR a single point source uh, so we can see the uh, attributes. And all I have to do to get started is go to the uh, light source itself. Um, we're going to add light fog. I'll come back to that. But first of all, let's just add light glow. And by enabling this texture button uh, here, this will connect a light glow node. So let's take a look at that. And then within this, we have optical effects. Uh, within this, we have glow, halo, and lens flare. And these are all forms of glow effects. Um, the, the first thing we have is the ability to change the uh, amplitude, or ba basically the fall off on these. And you can see lens flare will uh, come in in different categories. This is where some of the cheaper effects can be. But primarily, this lens flare here uh, connects uh, this lens flare, which is the more expensive uh, controllable uh, flare. For now, I'll uncheck this. We'll look at the basic uh, glow controls. OK, let's look at a few of the uh, attributes and uh, workflow of an optical effect. What I've done is I've set up a point source uh, with an IPR render right here. And uh, what we'll do to get started is we'll go to the attributes of the point light. Um, we'll connect fog. I've turned this down to zero for now. We'll come back to this. And we also uh, connect a light glow by hitting the texture button. And this will take us into the light glow attributes or the optical effects attributes. And within this, we have basic uh, controls over the fall off, uh, a couple star point things. We'll go over this in a moment. And then we have glow attributes, which would be more related to glow effects. Uh, below this, we have halo, which is another form of glow, kind of an encircling effect. And then we have lens flare, and this is the expensive lens flare that we mentioned. These controls are uh, not available to you until you invoke the lens flare. And here we can see this come in, but let's come back to that as well. So let's start off with a glow. And what we'll do is we'll bring up a glow intensity. And again, this is a post-process uh, on the render, but IPR will update it rather rapidly. Uh, within this, we have a spread control, which is really just the uh, the overall spread of the reach of the glow. 
uh, glow noise, etc. But let's go up here and we have set this to exponential, so uh, we can have basic fall offs uh, on this. Uh, glow color, obviously, this uh, global up here controls the uh, radial frequency, which is uh, the noise. And again, this you want to kind of randomize into something a little more natural. Uh, the number of star points that are broken up, uh, this can be animated as a rotation. Actually, any of these can be animated, of course. And uh, ignore light uh, specifies to not be linked to uh, some of the basic light uh, properties, such as intensity. As we go down here, we'll have, uh, let's move over to uh, Halo. And in Halo, I have none, but let's go ahead and add, uh, say, a lens flare. And what this will do is provide another optical concentration uh, within the center. This can have its own coloration um, and intensity as well. So the uh, very easy to, again, create uh, very cliched results from this. So we really want to go for as much subtlety as possible here. Um, Let's see, let's now look at uh, lens flare. We'll add this in. And again, this is uh, the standard uh, expensive method to render. Uh, from here, we can add a hexagonal to more mimic the iris of a camera. Uh, you can actually texture map an image to each flare, which would be rather interesting. Um, and then have a variety of controls for this as well. All right, and let's go up and uh, look at the effect of, some of altering the color on some of these. And this will uh, begin to show the separation of the two. So this is more of an overall cast. The halo color will be the, uh, again, that kind of ball surrounding the, the center. And, of course, the lens flare can have its own coloration spectrum. Okay, so these are all pretty stock uh, uh, attributes with optical effects. The main thing to think about as you design this again is, uh, again, what kind of light wrapping capability do you want from these? Um, this again is showing kind of more of a stadium light glow, but again, if this is used in very kind of rough uh, uh, ways or kind of broad ways, you can get a light wrapping uh, that's not so optically uh, correct, but again, provides great use for backgrounds. Let's go back up one and uh, let's open up, let's turn on, uh, invoke some light fog. And this again will create a bit of atmosphere around this and make it look a li little less precise also. Uh, what I've done here is I, uh, by invoking light fog, it gives you a basic way to color the fog and create the density if you need to texture map that with some noise. But let's go back to... Uh, Let's see here. Let's look at uh, the fog intensity. So this is always worth mapping to a noise, and in this case, I've mapped it to a uh, to the noise routine, the 2D noise routine, and I've chosen Perlin for a basic uh, kind of more blobby form. Um, this is controlled by not the color gain, but by the alpha gain in this case. Uh, so as I bring up here, the alpha gain now is the control for the amount of fog added. And uh, again, you'll see this renders first because it's not a retinal effect. This actually happens in world space. The glow and the optical effects are retinal effect and will come in post. But again, all I want to do here is add the lightest uh, kind of hint of atmosphere on top of this. And again, I can control uh, uh, some interesting uh, noise properties to kind of break up this and make it a little more randomized. And this is now based on a very low repeat uh, let's take this up a little higher. And now I have a little bit more erratic sense of uh, of this. Lastly, let's look at an application of using OptiFX on a digital background. In this shot, we have a uh, panoramic uh, cylindrical environment placed around a scene. And this has uh, had some matte painting work done on it. But nonetheless, it's a uh, circumference of a location. Uh, with the potential of having animation added in. So here we have uh, some UFOs animated on splines and flying past the sun and the camera. Let's go ahead and turn off these uh, path curves. Okay, when the stitch was made on this, uh, stitching the uh, multiple shots together, uh, there was a, a fair amount of lens flare in the shoot, and this uh, had to be painted out 
uh, during the matte painting process. So this left a basic region of sun. Now as the craft fly past the sun, this would be a dead giveaway that uh, this is in fact a photographic still background and not a uh, motion picture one. So the task here was to bring a light source in matching to the location of the sun and with optical effects added to provide lens glow and uh, lens flare to, uh, to enhance the final project. So let's look at the rendered sequence now of this. So as we look at the shot now, we can see the craft uh, flying past the sun and getting a dynamic behavior of the lens flare as they do uh, as the camera does rotate. In a nodal pan move like this, there would be a dynamic uh, behavior such as this. But again, uh, this because this was a static photography shoot, um, the lens flare is effectively baked in. So this allows us a way to, to restore that behavior to the plate. And then lastly, the light glow effect uh, provides a nice wrapping of the light uh, onto the craft as they do fly past uh, the sun.